Randy, before we begin, I thought we might just take a little bit of a moment to review uh, because uh, we've been talking about four central truths of a biblical worldview, but I'm not sure that we really put down on paper exactly what all we were covering with that. And so uh, I thought we'd take just a moment to look at each one of the books that we're dealing with and for you to tell us how that ties in with a biblical worldview. What does that book have to do, and not just the book, but the mm-hmm. theme of that book? What does that have to do with a biblical re- uh, worldview? First of all, put you on the spot again, let's summarize what a biblical worldview is in a few sentences. Biblical worldview is, is viewing the world the way the Bible does, the way God does as revealed in his word. Very good. I'll let him pass. That's a, that's a very good. And the very first thing that we did was look at Randy's book on heaven and the whole theme of heaven. And uh, I'd like for him to say, how does that fit in with a biblical worldview? Because that's talking about the future. What does that have to do with us right now? Well, I think how we view the future will determine how we view the present. If we view the past and the future in light of what Scripture says, then we will realize God's original plan for the universe is intact. The unfolding drama of redemption was part of His plan, and though He's not the author of sin, He is sovereign, and He unfolded His grace to us in Christ, and we will be better off for infinitely better off for all eternity as a result of what he did. So a biblical worldview about heaven is that God is actually going to bring heaven down to a renewed earth and we in renewed body and spirit will forever worship and serve him in community with each other. If that's in your mind, the way you live today will be lived with much more uh, happiness, contentment, anticipation, hope, and, and, and not hope that is like wishful thinking, but hope that is, is blood-bought by the Lord Jesus Christ. Randy, you mentioned contentment, and yet contentment is hard, frankly, mm-hmm. for us when suffering or problems come into our lives. And of course, that was the theme of the mm-hmm. second book that we were dealing with, the second topic, If God is Good. Mm-hmm. And of course, the idea is if God is good, why is there so much evil in the world? Tell us about how this relates to a biblical worldview. I would say that the primary emphasis of the whole notion of if God is good, then why? Is number one, he has reasons we don't fully understand, but we have his assurance that he is sovereign, and that he is working all things together for good in our lives. If that's your worldview, you will think very differently. Suffering will still be difficult. It will still be hard. But you will have this rock-solid foundation that God knows what he is doing, and he has not given over charge of the universe to people, and to demons, he is still sovereign, and he acts in our lives according to his love, and even though we don't understand or see it all now, one day we will. If that's in your mind, you will think differently, and you'll live differently. Randy, we took kind of what seemed to be very much of a a major turn, as it were, from a great topic like that to the very practical, I almost said sordid, term of, music, of uh, money and how we deal with that. But uh, the other, the third book, one we dealt with last night, Managing God's Money. Managing God's mm. Money. How does a biblical worldview relate to that? Mm. Well, if we see ourselves as not owners of what, quote, we have, but as stewards of what actually belongs to God, we will operate differently. A steward thinks differently than an owner does. An owner says, hey, it's mine. I'll do whatever I want to with it. A steward says, it's not mine. It belongs to God. 
I'll ask him what he wants me to do with it, and I'll search the scriptures to discover that. And then when I do what he wants me to, again, I experience contentment, and the world is blessed through my taking God's assets and investing them in such a way that they will become treasures in heaven and they will pay off in the lives of other people as well as myself, all to the glory of God for all eternity. 